This is James with the Board Game Network. I am looking at how to play the game of this game called Dotals, uh, designed by Klaus Teuber. Um, this one was nominated in the Family Games category for an Origins Award in 2016. And they have not announced the winners as I'm making this video. Uh, but this is one of the nominees, or one of the, uh, yeah, the nominations for the winner. So we don't know who the winner is going to be, but this is one of the five top in the running. And this is simply a uh, maybe Pictionary with clay type game. Uh, I'm going to be explaining the rules. And what you do is this is a two or a three to six player game, ages 10 and up. It takes about 40 minutes. You, the word dotals is a combination of dough plus riddles. That's where that comes from. So each person just grabs a suggestion board. It's one of these boards. They have suggestions for questions on one side. They all look the same, but if you flip them over, they have a bunch of different words on the back, and each person's is different on the back. You also take two suggestion sheets. That's these sheets right here. Uh, but if you've got a three-player game, then you take three. You're making three different objects, or if you're in a, a, a four, five, or six player game, you're making two objects. And so what each person does is they make, they pick out objects on the back of this board, they sculpt them in clay, and then you try to figure out what the opponent's objects are. So I'm just going to grab uh, some dough here and make some right away. And you don't want your objects in clay to be too perfect, and you don't want them to be too vague because you actually score points when somebody else guesses yours. But if you make it too obvious, then uh, they'll, they'll get them right away. So I picked out a light bulb. <clears throat> so I'm gonna make something that kind of looks like, I don't know, maybe a light bulb. Now this is an incandescent. Doesn't really specify. Something like that and I've written light bulb on the back of the sheet. I put this in one of the spaces and I put the sheet underneath that. I also grabbed barbell. So I can just quickly make a couple of round things and roll something in the middle. There's my barbell, and you need to turn these so you can see the letters. And then I've got trombone is my third one. Let's see, that one may be a little more challenging here, but I don't want it to look too perfect. So let's make it wider at one end here, like a trombone. And I don't know how to make this slide thing, but maybe just something like this. And there I go, I've got my three objects. Trombone, I'm putting that one, uh, writing it on there, putting it so I can see the, the clue sheets right there, the solution sheets. And when you ask somebody a question, that question needs to be able to be answered with a yes, a no, a maybe, or it cannot be answered clearly. One of those four questions. You cannot ask them, you know, what kind of an object is it? Uh, what category is it in? Or something of that nature. It has to be yes, no, maybe, or it cannot be answered clearly. So, the whoever is the first player, they will just pick a, an object and say, well, you know, I, we all need to, we all start our question marks on this space right here with the arrow. We take and put, let's say I am green here because I've got the green clay. So your green little tokens start in this space here. 
So the purple ones would start here. And the red ones will start over here. And you're only gonna have two tokens if you're only got two objects. And then each person takes their cube and sets it on their board. It has to be setting on the board, no holding it in your hand. All right. So let's say I wanna ask a question about this one. So I would move the marker up around here and it's got two question marks there, which means I get to ask two questions. Well, I might say, well, is that a living object? And the person would say, no. And they say, I went, maybe I would say, well, is it a man-made object? And they would say, no. Okay, and then my turn's over and then it becomes the person to the left's turn to, to move stuff around. And you'll notice that all of these have the same objects around the circle, question, double question marks, A, B, C, and then the very last space is double question mark slash A, B, C, so it's one or the other. And the A, B, C, uh, that allows you to ask a letter, and you get to specify which letter, the f up through five. So you get to know the first five letters of the object, uh, but that's as far as you can go. So let's say that Red wants to ask about this one. You know, is this a living thing? Well, no, that's not. Uh, is it, uh, is it over five pounds? Well, no, it's not. So then it becomes the purple's turn. And purple, maybe purple wants to ask red again, what is your third letter for this object? And that would be an A. So the person announces the answer before they write it down. So everybody hears it at the same time. And anytime somebody knows, thinks they know the answer to this, what they do is they grab their cube, their guest cube, and throw it in here. And who, if more than one person's throwing it in here, they say dodles, everybody says dodles, throws it in there, and who's ever comes out first gets to, gets to guess first. Now you can't guess while it's still on here on the starting space, but as soon as somebody moves it off of there, you can guess. And if that happens before they get to ask their question, whoever's turn it is gets the chance to ask first. So even though somebody else might throw it in and get their cube to come out first, the person whose turn it is, they get the right to guess first before they even ask the question. So there might be two or three people throwing and they'll come out here and whoever's first gets to ask first. So, um, the first person has the right to guess. The, you get two scores. It, let's say that somebody guessed that, and this is my fabulous uh, diaper. This is a diaper. Well, that looks like a diaper, right? But there's some stuff in the middle to represent some stuff in the middle of the diaper. So let's say, oh, I know what that is. That's a diaper. And so the person, the red person, would flip the sheet over, show that it's a diaper, take it off the board, and what happens is you look at the green arrows on the space that I'm on, since I guessed it and I'm green, I get to go up three arrows, one, two, three. And red gets, looks at where this marker is on the spaces and they get to go up however many, whatever this number is. So red would go up one because it was on the one space. It goes up to two, it goes up to three and then it goes back down. So if you make one that's too easy, the creator won't get very many points. If you make it too hard, you won't get too many points. But if it's just vague enough, you'll get actually get a lot of points for it if they, if they score it right about here. So that's the two people, both people score, the, the person who guesses it and the person who created it. Now, if you get all the way to the end and somebody puts it there and still can't guess, then that goes off, this comes off, and nobody gets the chance to guess it after that point. So this game ends in two different ways. And this wrote the, fir the first person, the person just rotates around, and that's what this marker thing is for, to keep track of whose turn it is. But there's two ways it can end. Somebody can get all the way to here. Oh, what happens if you guess wrong? Oh, that's what this red arrow's about. You see these red arrows here? If somebody guesses wrong, this is how many spaces they go backwards on the track. So you don't want to guess wrong. Two ways to end. If somebody makes it all the way to here, game's over, that's the winner. The other way to win is if somebody on their turn 
doesn't have anything to guess because everybody else's are already off the board. Then whoever's ahead is the winner. So that's basically how you play the game. You'll see that if you want to see what I had, and you have the right to pick this up and take a look at it because it may not look the same from every angle. I just built some of these really fast. That was a bomb. This one here is a bridge. This one here was a slide. This one is an arrow. This one is popcorn. And then you know the greens, because I did that in front of you. So, uh, the active player always has the right to guess. I covered that. And the first player always has the right to take a turn. So if somebody guesses it before the player, before somebody gets it off, when somebody, as soon as they move it off, if somebody else guesses it and they don't really get their turn, then they can ask somebody else a question or to take a different turn. So the first player always has a chance to go also. So that's how you play this game, Dodles. Make sure you tune in for all of our videos and see how to play a game and uh, like us on Facebook.